Okay, so uh, yesterday we started uh, Laplace transform. Uh, Laplace transform is a method to solve constant coefficient uh, equations where the force function, external force function, GT, is uh, either non-continuous or piecewise continuous or uh, a, a impulse function. An impulse function actually is is not even a function; uh, it's a distribution. But uh, one has to consider uh, differential equations where the external force function is an impulse function, right? You may just send a pulse to an electric, you know, circuit, uh, or you may just uh, uh, hit uh, a moving object and then see, you know, how it reacts. So that kind of uh, actually uh, systems uh, involves uh, distributions and one has to consider uh, solutions of uh, differential equations where the uh, external force, fun force function is, uh, you know, a distribution. All right, now what's the Laplace transform? What is the Laplace transform? It's a transformation of functions. You take a function of t and <clears throat> you apply this uh, uh, <clears throat> integral to that, and it turns out to be a function of s. Okay, of course Laplace transform exists provided that uh, you know this improper integral is convergent, and we have done some computations. We computed Laplace transform of one constant function one, and it turned out that this function is just one over s. And this is uh, the case only if s is positive. So this function is uh, well defined for positive s values, because here we uh, have an integral, and at the uh, you know for this integral to be convergent, it turns out that s has to be positive. Okay. All right. Now similarly, we have computed Laplace transform of the exponential function. It turned out that its uh, Laplace transform is 1 over s minus a. Uh, note that, you know, this is compatible with the <coughs> uh, previous, actually, uh, uh, gadget. So, you see, e to the power a t is equal to 1 if a is 1. So, uh, uh, Laplace transform of 1, which is, we know that this is 1 over s, but it is also e to the power a t, so it is just 1 over s minus a, but a is 0. So when a is 0, this is 1 over a. So you see that, you know, this computation is compatible with the above one. Okay, what else? <clears throat> we computed Laplace transform of sine 80, and it turned out that it's uh, Laplace transform is uh, a over s squared plus a squared, and again it is defined for positive s values. Similarly, one can compute Laplace transform of cosine at, and it turns out that it is uh, s over s squared plus a squared. And then we made the following observation that Laplace transform is a linear transformation actually, and we'll, we will uh, make use of this okay uh, what else then we considered uh, this theorems uh, you know which guarantees when the Laplace transform exists and that was the important thing it relates Laplace transform of a function uh, with the Laplace transform of its derivative so uh first let's see why the proof uh, of let's see why the corollary works proof of the corollary and then i'll prove the theorem so by the theorem we know by the theorem we have what laplace transform of f prime t is just uh s times Laplace transform of 
minus or what was it s times yes s times the laplace transform of f minus f zero so if i take second derivative then well, second derivative is the first derivative of the derivative. So this is just Laplace transform of f prime t minus f prime zero, right? Since uh, f double prime is just derivative of f prime. Okay. And I use the same formula again. So Laplace transform of f prime is just Laplace trans s times the Laplace transform of f uh, minus f of s. Okay. So if you open up this, you get just s squared times Laplace transform of f minus s times f zero minus f prime zero. And if you just keep going, uh, you know, like this, so Laplace transform of triple prime will be just s times the Laplace transform of double prime minus double prime at zero, right? Since uh, f triple prime is just derivative of the second uh, derivative. And here you just plug what we have computed above. So this is S squared times Laplace transform of F of T minus F of F zero minus F prime zero minus F double prime zero. And you just see that this is just S cubed times Laplace transform of F minus S squared times F of zero minus S times F prime zero minus F double prime zero and so on, okay? So uh, similarly, uh, you know, you get all, uh, okay. Similar argument uh, finishes the proof. You may just do induction actually, right? So let's see the proof of the theorem. All right, we just directly uh, try to compute the Laplace transform of F prime. What is this? Well, this is by definition just zero to infinite e to the power minus ft F prime uh, t dt, right? Buraya kadar sorusu olan var mı? And then we do what? We apply integration by parts, right? We don't have, you know, many actually uh, you know, techniques. So u is just e to the power minus st. Therefore, du is just minus e to the power st dt. dv is just f prime t dt so v is just f of t so this is just uv zero to infinite minus zero to infinite v du so we get what so we get i'm sorry Okay. All right. Uh, sorry about that. So this is what UV. UV is just e to the power minus st times f of t zero infinite minus zero infinite of v uh, f of t du. So it is okay. 
minus e to the power st uh, f of t dt. Uh, I made a mistake, I guess here, when you take derivative, S comes down, right? Right, when you take derivative, you have minus S times e to the power st, dt. So, I have minus S here. Okay. Well, what is this gadget? Uh, when you plug zero, well, you see f of t in the theorem, in the theorem, we are given that f of t is less than this expression, right? e to the power a t uh, for some uh, a. Therefore, So you see, uh, e to the power minus st times f of t is less than <clears throat> e to the power st times uh, this gadget, and this is less than e to the power at. And this is just e to the power a minus s times t. Therefore, therefore uh, if s is large enough, this power will be negative. So this goes to zero as t goes to infinity, provided that, provided that, uh, s is larger than a. So on some interval, uh, like you know, uh, a infinity, this uh, limit will go to zero. Therefore, therefore, when you plug zero, uh, I mean infinite here, you will get zero. And then when you plug uh, zero, you get e to the power zero, f of zero, minus, minus, minus, plus. So this is just s times integral zero to infinity, e to the power st, f of t, dt. But you see, what is this expression? This is just, this integral is just the Laplace transform of f. So what we have seen then, then, and for s larger than a, we have what? Laplace transform of f prime t is equal to, okay, is equal to what? Uh, s times the Laplace transform of f, s times the Laplace transform of f minus, uh, e to the power 0 is just 1, so f of 0, f of 0, and this finishes the proof, okay? Any questions? All right, now let's see some examples where we use you know, Laplace transform solving uh, differential equations. First example, solve the IVP, initial value problem, y double prime minus y minus 2y equals 0, y 0 equals 1, y prime 0 is equal to 0. All right, so what we do, well, here y is considered as a function of uh, t, the independent variable t, and I will use Laplace transform and map to this to a function of s, okay? So, uh, as we had uh, seen yesterday, uh, you know, Laplace transforms of, uh, I mean, uh, functions of t will be denoted usually with small letters, and their Laplace transforms are uh, denoted usually uh, with big letters, they are functions of s, okay? Uh, what we do, apply, we apply 
Laplace transform transform to the equation. All right, I have an equation. This function is equal to zero, right? So y double prime minus y minus 2y is a function of time, and that's equal to zero. So Laplace transform of this function is equal to Laplace transform of this function. Well, Laplace transform is linear, so I can write it this way. y prime minus, so prime here minus Laplace transform of, uh, well, two times the Laplace transform of y. Laplace transform of zero, since it is linear again, this is just zero. All right, now what is this gadget? Well, this is just s squared y s minus s times y prime zero minus y zero, right? The second derivative. First derivative is just s times y s minus uh, y0 minus 2 times the Laplace transform of y and everything adds up to 0. And then we do what? Well, since this is an initial value problem, I know the values of uh, y and its derivative at 0. So this is 1, this is 0, this is 0. Right? Doğru mu yapıyorum? Hayır, tersi. y0 1, y prime 0 ymiş. Bu sıfır, bu bir, bu bir. O halde ne elde ettik? Ee, s kare y s minus 1 minus s times y s plus 1 minus 2 y s equals 0. Alright. Bir daha kontrol edelim. Bu sıfır, burası birdi. Eksi, burası o. Artı oldu. Tamam. Şimdi ys'e bakalım. Ys'in e, şeyi nedir? Katsayıları. S kare minus S minus 2. Geriye de ne kaldı? E, sıfır. Burada bir hata yaptım sanırım ama. Okay. O, burası şöyle olacak. Özür dilerim. Burası da y, burada prime var. Dolayısıyla burası 1, burası 0. Ee, şeye bakarsak. E, ikinci türevde e, s çarpı f0 minus f prime 0. Evet. Ee, türevlerin derecesi giderek artıyor. Tamam. O zaman ne oldu? Şurası S oldu. Tamam. Burası S. Ee, burası 0. Ee, buradan da 1 geldi. Dolayısıyla burada ki ifade S eksi 1. All right, so from this we see that y s is just s minus 1 divided by s squared minus s minus 2. All right, so we computed uh, the Laplace transform of the solution. Solution is the function whose Laplace transform is this. So we need to, we need to find yt so that so that so that 
uh, Laplace transform of y is just s minus 1 divided by s squared minus s minus 2. Well, I told you yesterday that taking Laplace transform is like taking derivative. It is algorithmic, okay? Uh, and it is easy, uh, usually. And uh, its inverse transform, inverse Laplace transform is like integral, so it is usually non-trivial. Uh, and not only this, but the techniques uh, to be used for taking inverse Laplace are similar to, you know, uh, techniques of integration. So we will, uh, you know, apply those techniques. How? Well, you see, this function here is uh, uh, a rational function. And think of, you know, uh, the following. Suppose you would like to uh, integrate such an expression. What would you do? Okay. Well, you would use partial fractions, right? Uh, so let's look at this gadget, ys. So this is just s minus 1. And, okay, now what about the denominator, s squared minus s minus 1? Uh, can we uh, write, you know, separate this into partial fractions? Okay, so this is, I guess, s minus uh no, s plus 1, s minus 2, right? Yes. So, uh, I will use, you know, partial fractions. Okay. Let's find a and b. And you see, once I find a and b, I will be done because I know functions whose Laplace transform is... Uh, s minus a, right? I know that this is just Laplace transform of e to the power at. So I can find the function, okay? So I just need to find a and b. How can we do this? Well, let's write down s plus 1 plus b s minus 2. Uh, this is just a times s minus 2 plus b times s plus 1 divided by s plus 1 times s minus 2 and this has to be s minus 1 divided by the same thing so from this we see what <clears throat> a s plus b s minus or plus uh, minus 2 a plus b is equal to s minus 1 so from this, we see that a plus b is equal to 1, and minus 2a plus b is equal to minus 1. Doğru yaptık değil mi? Evet. a, s artı b, s eksi 2a artı b. Tamam. Bunları birbirinden çıkartırsak, a'dan eksi 2a çıkarsa 3a kalır. B'den B çıkarsa 0, 1'den eksi 1 çıkarsa 2. Dolayısıyla A eşittir 2 bölü 3. B de o zaman 1 bölü 3. So, Ys, which is just, okay. So, Laplace transform of Yt, which is the Laplace transform of Ys, is equal to what? A, which is just 2 over 3 times s minus uh, no, neydi? Uh, s artı 1. Artı 1 bölü 3, 1 bölü s eksi 2. So what is this? Laplace transform of yt is equal to 2 over 3 times Laplace transform of this is uh, e to the power minus t, right? So Laplace transform of e to the power a t was 1 over s minus a. So if I compare these two, I see that this is just e to the power a t, where a is just minus 1. And then I have 1 over 3 times Laplace transform of e to the power 2 t. And again, we use the fact that Laplace transform is just linear. 
So this is just 2 over 3 times e to the power minus <coughs> t plus 1 over 3 times e to the power 2t. Now what we have, I have Laplace transform of y equals Laplace transform of this gadget. And this gives us yt is equal to 2 over 3 times e to the power minus t plus 1 over 3 times e to the power 2t. Uh, here, of course, we use the following fact, which wa we won't uh, prove, but we use the uh, fact that uh, Laplace transform is injective. Okay. So if we have two functions with the same Laplace transform, then they have to be equal. So uh, we have uh, then this uh, conclusion. You see that I was given an initial value problem, <clears throat> and I found directly the unique solution of the initial value problem, right? <clears throat> this is an initial value problem. And since the coefficient functions are just constants, they are continuous everywhere. So this initial value problem has a unique solution defined on the all real line. And uh, that's the solution of the initial value problem. Of course, you may say that, you know, we don't need Laplace transform uh, to solve, uh, you know, uh, this the initial value problem, we already knew that how you know uh, how to solve this, right? It's a constant coefficient equation. Uh, but nevertheless, you know Laplace transform gives a uh, method for this. Here there is a uh, there is an important remark. What's that? So let me write here. As a remark, uh, note that you see uh, the coefficient of y is what coefficient of uh, y s here is just this expression s squared minus s minus t, and that is nothing but actually the characteristic equation of this differential equation. What is the characteristic equation? It is r squared minus r minus 2, right? This is the characteristic equation. And this is the same thing, where r is replaced by s, okay? So uh, if you just look at, you know, the general situation, this is always the case, right? Uh, and uh, that's actually uh, a checkpoint for us, you know, to uh, see whether we are uh, making a mistake or not. Uh, note that, note that, uh, for a constant coefficient uh, equation, I mean linear equation, let's say a and and derivative. And then let's say a1 first derivative plus a0y equals gt. Uh, after taking the Laplace transform, the coefficient of Ys, which is the Laplace transform of little y, is uh, nothing but the characteristic equation, characteristic polynomial or, uh, okay, polynomial, uh, where uh, with uh, variable s instead of r. OK. 
Okey. Nedir yani? Ee, bunu Laplace'ını aldığınız zaman çıkacak olan şey şu. A n s üzeri n a n eksi 1 s üzeri eksi 1 böyle gidecek. A1 s plus a0 times y s equals something. So the coefficient of y s is always the characteristic polynomial. Okay. But instead of r you have s. That's it. All right. Uh, let's uh, move on and make another example. Consider an, another example. Solve the IVP. Okay. Y double prime plus Y equals sine 2T. Y zero equals 2 and Y prime zero equals 1. Let's see how we can solve this. All right. We use the uh, same notation. So ys, big ys, will uh, denote the Laplace transform of yt. And we take Laplace transform of both sides. So Laplace transform of y double prime plus y is equal to Laplace transform of sine 2t. And this gives us what? This gives us s squared ys minus s times y0 minus y prime 0. That's the Laplace transform of y double prime plus Laplace transform of ys. Uh, yt which is ys and here Laplace transform of sine 2t sine a t that's uh, Laplace transform uh, is just a over uh, s squared plus a squared right where a is just 2 so it is just 2 over uh, 2 squared plus s squared okay Well, let's plug the values also. Y0 was 2 and Y prime 0 is, uh, sorry, it is 1. Okay. So what we see is then uh, S squared plus 1 YS. That's just the characteristic equation, right? Minus 2S minus 1 is equal to 2 over 4 plus s squared. So from this we see that y s is just okay. Two uh, s plus one s squared plus one plus two over s squared plus one and s squared plus four. All right. <coughs> well. Uh, I have to think of a function whose Laplace transform is equal to this. I may consider each uh, piece separately. For this one, I will use again uh, partial fractions and write this as the sum of two, uh, you know, fractions. And here I will uh, do a slightly different thing. You see, I can separate this two and write it this way. So this is two times s over s squared plus one plus one over s squared plus one. This is the Laplace transform of cosine. This is the Laplace transform of sine, right? What about this term? Okay, now you see I have s squared, but no s. So I may regard s squared as if it is s to decompose this into two partial fractions. So a over s squared plus 1 plus b over s squared plus 4. And well, I have to multiply this by s squared plus 4 and this one by s squared plus uh, 1. And you see uh, that uh, a plus b has to be uh, 0 because there will be 
no s square term and 4a plus b has to be 2. From this, you know, if you subtract first equation from the second one, you get 3a is equal to 2. So a is just 2 over 3, and therefore b is minus 2 over 3. Okay. Doğru mu yaptık? Eksi 1 ile çarpıp toplarsam 3a eşittir 2, a eşittir 2 bölü 3, b de eksi 2 bölü 3. Tamamdır. So, what we have seen is then y s is equal to 2 times Laplace transform of cosine t plus Laplace transform of sine t plus a, a was 2 over 3, so 2 over 3 times 1 over 1 plus s squared, so this is just Laplace transform of sine t. And then I have uh, minus 2 over 3 times, uh, okay, 1 over s squared plus 4. But you see, this is just... Uh, if I write here 2, then I will have 1 here, right? And what is this? This is a over a squared plus a squared. So Laplace transform of uh, sine 2t. So you see then, uh, okay. Let me write this thing as a single. So 2 times cosine t. And here I have sine t and 2 over t. 3 sine t. So this becomes uh, 5 over 3 sine t. Uh, okay, şöyle yazayım. Bir satır daha aşağıya. 2 tane kosinüs t artı 5 bölü 3 sinüs t. And here I have 1 over 3 times Laplace transform of uh, sine 2t. Right? A over S squared plus A squared. And that is equal to what? Uh, 2 times cosine T plus 5 over 3 times sine T minus 1 over 3 times sine 2T. And therefore, YT is just, that's the Laplace transform inverse Laplace of uh, ys. So it has to be this because Laplace transform is one to one. So if we have, right, this is just Laplace transform of yt. And this Laplace transform is equal to this Laplace transform. Therefore, yt has to be equal to this gadget, right? So sine t minus one over three. Okay. Peki, uh, evet. Hmm. Ben de cevapları yok bunların, uh, o yüzden de çok emin değilim uh, doğru yapıp yapmadım da ama en azından initial conditionları kontrol edebiliriz. Neydi? Sıfır koyduğumuzda iki verecekti, türevinde sıfır koyduğumuzda bir verecekti. Bakalım. Ee, sıfır koyduğumuzda 2 verecek. Sıfır koyarsanız gerçekten 2 veriyor. Tamam. Türevinde sıfır koyarsanız türevini aldığınızda burada sinüs gelecek. Oradan bir şey gelmeyecek. Buradan kosinüs gelecek. Sıfır koyduğunuzda 5 bölü 3. Buradan da kosinüs gelecek ama 2 tane olacak. Dolayısıyla 2 bölü 3. O halde 3 bölü 3 yani 1. Ee, evet en azından initial conditionları sağlıyorlar. Ee, sinüs de kosinüs zaten e, şeyin y kare plus y'in homojen çözümü. Şurası dikkat ederseniz komplementeri çözümden gelen kısım değil mi? Burası particular'dan gelen kısım. Ee, particular'ın çözümü mü bu? Bakalım. 
Neydi? Y double prime plus y equals sinüs 2t'yi veriyor mu bu? 2 kere türevini alırsanız eksi 4 bölü 3 sinüs 2t olur. Artı pardon eksi 1 bölü 3 daha sinüs 2t. 2 kere türevini aldığınızda 2 e, pardon sinüsün 2 kere türevini alırsınız. Burası artı sinüs 2t. Dolayısıyla burası da e, şimdi 1 bölü 3 y'yi 1 bölü 3 sinüs 2t aldım. Pardon eksi aldım. 2 kere türevini aldığımda burası artı. Burası eksi. Dolayısıyla burası da sinüs 2t e, oluyor. Ki doğru cevap. Tamam. Doğru yapmışız. Okey. Alright. So uh, let me do one more example. Solve the IVP. Okay. Y fourth derivative minus y equals zero. Y zero equals zero. Y prime zero equals one. Y double prime equals zero, and y triple prime zero is equal to zero. Well, how would you solve this? We use the same method. All right, let's take the Laplace transform. So Laplace transform of the fourth derivative minus the y is equal to zero. So what is this? This is just the Laplace transform of the fourth derivative is s to the four times uh, y s minus s cubed times y zero minus s squared times y prime zero minus s times y second derivative at zero minus uh, uh, the third derivative at zero minus Laplace transform of y which is y s and that's equal to zero. Now let's plug the values. Uh, this one is 1, all others are 0, so we just get s square, uh, sorry, s to the 4 minus 1 times y s is equal to s squared. Yes, right, all others are 0, therefore from this we see that y s is just s squared over s to the 4 minus 1. Well, this can be written as a over s squared minus 1, b over s squared plus 1, right? Uh, since uh, I have only s squared and s to the 4, I, I can write it this way regarding s squared as a single variable. Uh, and from this, we see that, okay, a plus b has to be 1. And, uh, okay, so I multiply this with s squared plus 1, this one with s squared minus 1, and a minus b is 0, so from this we see that 2a is just 1, a is 1 over 2, and b is 1 over 2 minus 1 over 2. So y s is just uh, 1 over 2 parentheses uh, I have efendim evet evet haklısın tamam uh, s kare eksi 1 uh, artı s kare artı 1 aslında daha bunu da ilerletmemiz lazım right this can be further written like this s plus 1 uh, s minus 1 plus 1 over 2 şurada katsayılara bakalım nedir burada şimdi 
Ee, şöyle olsa daha iyi galiba yok. Ee, artı eksi olsun. Eksi ile çarptığım zaman eksi bir eksi bir daha artı bir. Buradan da bir geldi. İki geldi. Pay iki olacak. Dolayısıyla şunu da ikiye bölelim. O halde burası bir bölü dört parantezinde. Bu nedir? Ee, eksi e üzeri eksi t değil mi? Artı e üzeri t artı 1 bölü 2 burası da sinüs t. So yt would be just uh, e üzeri t eksi e üzeri eksi t bölü 2 ya da 4 artı uh, 1 bölü 2 sinüs Okay. So that's the uh, solution. Yani bu şuymuş. 1 bölü 2 sinüs hiperbolik t artı sinüs t. Right? Okay. Uh, Let's have a break now. Uh, I will start a new uh, section. Okay, let me write down the name of the section. Uh, okay. Step functions. Note that in all the examples we have considered so far, actually we don't need Laplace transform, right? These are just constant coefficient equations where the force function is, uh, functions are always continuous and not only continuous, they are, you know, functions uh, so that, you know, you know how to find a particular solution. They are either sine t or zero, Right, uh, so you don't need actually Laplace transform to find these solutions, but you will see uh, in the next hour that you know for uh, external force functions, where uh, external force functions uh, which can be expressed using step functions, non-continuous functions. Uh, one uh, has to consider, uh, you know, one has to use Laplace transform. Well, actually one maybe uh, uh, doesn't have to use Laplace transform, but if you use Laplace transform, life becomes easy. All right, uh, let me stop here. I'll continue in the second hour.